Well, it's good to be here, and uh, thank you for the invitation. Hella and I had the idea of sharing this session together, and we planned for it, but we didn't plan for a Hamas attack on Israel in a retaliation. And about 10 days ago, we had to look at whose workload was where, and, and it fell to me. But I'm grateful. I'm taking responsibility for what I say, but I'm grateful to Hella, who did have a look over it for me and, and give me some pointers and some guidance uh, in the, the final uh, copy of it. it. It's my intention to explore the response of EBF, the organization, and its member bodies to the war in Ukraine. In particular, I'll explore the unprecedented humanitarian aid response and the means it presented to demonstrate our Christian unity as brothers and sisters in Christ. As a framework, I'm going to use Laurie Green's theology spiral, developed to explore contextual theology and described as a system of discovery and transformation. The spiral begins with ex the experience of myself and Hella as EBF General Secretaries coordinating this global Baptist response. It will move to an exploration of the tensions that we experienced and the values that we observed and indeed embodied. I'll then reflect theologically on our experience and actions in particular the way they sought to express unity. And finally, I'll ask, how will this impact future EBF responses to the continuing needs in Ukraine and in our response to other crises in the region, such as the current Israel-Palestine war and the ethnic cleansing in Azerbaijan? The EBF statutes state that EBF exists to strengthen and draw together Baptists in Europe the Middle East and Central Asia on the basis of their Christian witness and distinctive convictions to encourage and inspire them in faith and fellowship and shared responsibility and to seek in all its endeavours to fulfil the will of Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. At the heart of EBF is this purpose of Baptist unity to draw together Baptists in Europe, Central Asia, and the Middle East. And whilst this is only a limited demonstration of Christian unity, it is nonetheless a challenging remit. Historically, EBF was formed as a region of the Baptist World Alliance to focus on the building of a peaceful Europe following World War II. The geographical and cultural spread which occurred over the following 75 years has increased the complexity of the challenge of this international, intercultural and intergenerational community. Our experience. When Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th, 2022, Hela Licht and I were together in Riga. We sent a message to the Ukrainian Baptist leaders to assure them of our prayers and our practical support. We hosted a Zoom call of global Baptist leaders, relief agencies and EBF member bodies where we gave space to Igor Bandura to share his experience and describe the help they needed on day one of the war. Four immediate priorities were identified and became an expression of unity among EBF member bodies. Prayer. We longed that the war would end quickly and had a desire to pray for peace. In particular, the EBF Zoom prayer gatherings and the BWA YouTube prayer calls were used to draw people together who wanted to pray for peace. And to this day, there continues a monthly EBF international prayer gathering for peace in the region. The second area was communication. The global media did not tell the story of the churches and their response. We recognized that we had a responsibility to inform the Baptist community, community about what was happening to their sisters and brothers in the nation. The freedom of religion and belief abuses in the occupied territories and the compassion ministries being carried out in Christ's name across the nation 
and in the borderlands. Thirdly, there was the area of funding. With shortages in Ukraine and distribution lines cut, supply costs went up immediately in Ukraine. In bordering countries, local Baptist churches and unions reached out to Ukrainian refugees, opening their homes, spending savings, and emptying personal supplies in order to welcome mostly vulnerable women and children. EBF hosted an international funding meeting within 36 hours of the start of the war under the oversight of the Baptist World Alliance Forum for Aid and Development. EBF were tasked as the lead agency and therefore coordinators of the response. $250,000 were pledged almost immediately, a staggering sum of money, potentially the largest Baptist response figure in history, and yet today a tiny fraction of the $10 million that has been gathered by the Global Baptist family. And then finally, there was presence. Initially, presence was expressed in daily calls to Ukraine. Hela Richt acted as the voice of EBF to our Ukrainian brothers and sisters. Simultaneously, Hungarian Baptist aid moved into Ukraine, establishing a presence in the country. Polish, Romanian, Slovakian and Moldovan Baptists went to the border to be present in welcoming the refugees and latterly have taken aid into the country. Belarusian Baptists moved into Russia to be present and support Ukrainians who found themselves in occupied territories and enabled their safe passage along the borders to Poland. In the last 18 months, EBF and BWA staff had visited Ukraine, but presence was demonstrated in endless Zoom calls to discuss response details and consider future actions. And on two occasions in the first year, EBF also drew together in Vienna leaders of the Ukraine Union with union leaders of the bordering nations to listen to one another, to encourage one another, and to make plans for the future in a coordinated manner. These were our initial expressions of unity. Let's explore things a bit further. As we consider the tensions and the values that were evident, we could explore many different aspects of the response. When does presence become invasive, disruptive, or manipulative? Regarding funding, who decides where the money should be spent? What rules should be applied? What accountability structures should be in place? In other words, there are many questions regarding power and where power lies, especially when you keep adding zeros to the total amount of money raised. Prayer. Can you pause? Can you stop a call to prayer that starts in a Kairos moment? Would you want to? Communication. What values do we present in the stories we tell and in the images we show? Was EBF right to say we will not show the faces of children in our communication when others were telling us that they could raise even more money if we used those images? Well, unfortunately, these issues will have to be explored in another paper on another occasion. But there is one aspect of this response that we will focus on in this paper, and it is the expression of unity. It has been said on many occasions that the war between Russia and Ukraine has united the European Baptist Federation and probably the global Baptist family of the Baptist World Alliance. What do we mean by that? Well, firstly, I do not want to suggest that there was a moment of disunity prior to the invasion. EBF was in a good place, buoyant for some reason in the appointment of a new general secretary with a sense of expectation for the future, but especially because we were emerging from the isolation and separation of COVID-19. Secondly, there can be no sense in which this unity can be described as complete. It's clear from the lack of mention of the Russian Baptist Union in the preceding narrative that there are challenges to unity. 
There were, as has been mentioned already, occasional calls for Russia to be removed from the EBF due to their lack of outspoken criticism against the invasion. Ukrainian Baptists have expressed real disappointment in the statements of Russian Baptist ministers who have supported the war, or their blessing of Russian soldiers, or in their failure to condemn the annexation of Crimea and the Donbass region, as well as the 2022 invasion. The absence of Ukraine from the Euroasiatic Baptist Federation meetings since the start of the war is a further example of the lack of unity, as is the collapse of the EAAA. However, unity was demonstrated in the four priorities of giving, prayer, communication and presence. It was demonstrated in the lack of questions regarding doctrinal belief ethical stances or missional approach by recipients or donors. Those issues were forgotten as they came together to serve. The unity of commitment to fellow Baptists and the bordering nations overcame national stereotypes, recent historical divisions and scepticism of the other. The continual care of refugees and aid trips into the region demonstrate that this unity still exists to a certain extent, although some signs of strain on the unity are visible as the long-term reality unfolds. Unity was also demonstrated in that both Russian and Ukrainian unions asked the EBF and BWA General Secretaries to convey that they continued to pray for the other in their challenging circumstances. But what is the nature of this unity as I move to reflection? And is this a Christian unity? Surely Christian unity is more than working together in a common cause. Within the restrictions of this short paper, I want to introduce John Stott, Israel Olofinyana and Nigel Wright as very brief evangelical conversational partners. John Stott wrote in the latter stages of his life a book called Evangelical Truth, a personal plea for unity. Within it he calls the evangelical church to come together based on the initiative of God in revealing himself the love of Christ in dying for our sins and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in facilitating every aspect of our Christian discipleship. Three simple things. However, he also asserts and unpacks the idea that belief leads to behaviour. And the behaviours relating to unity that he describes include integrity, working together and enduring suffering and hardship. This minimalist requirement of doctrinal unity and Christian practice correlates with English Baptist author Nigel Wright who asserts Baptists are evangelicals and Baptists are activists. Whilst recognising different approaches to the task of theology, Wright describes Baptist unity in terms of a small set of core Christian convictions and a shared commitment to action whilst recognising there are many other convictions and beliefs on which there is difference. Dr Israel Olafinyana, writing in the English Baptist magazine Baptist Together, argues for an ontological pattern of unity in diversity. He contends that both unity and diversity are embodied in the creation, the incarnation and the reconciliation of God. Dr. Olafinyana emphasizes one humanity created equal, but differently. That Jesus demonstrates solidarity with the whole of humanity and the reconciliation of that one humanity to God and to each other is through the cross, thus ending cultural hostility between Jew and Gentile without ending their identity. For all of Inyana, unity is from the Godhead and can be experienced in all societies as a result of the actions of God today, mediated through the living example of the church, the body of Christ, 
made up of many parts. Ultimately, all of Inyana's vision of God's kingdom is a varied society, reconciled to each other, in which there is the opportunity for flourishing for all. In bringing together these evangelical authors' reflections, I would contend that Christian unity may be established not on doctrinal uniformity, but on a small set of commonly held core Christian beliefs and particular actions that encourage and enable human flourishing for all, which includes bearing witness to the Christian gospel. Denton Lotz, former General Secretary of BWA, reduced this core belief to one name in his often quoted phrase, we belong together because we belong to Christ. This understanding of Christian unity requires the purposeful decision not to allow differing beliefs beyond our union with Christ and differing ethical or pastoral practices to interfere with the functional and observable unity of witness in and to the world of the church. It is this concept of Christian unity that is described in the EBF statutes. EBF exists to strengthen and draw together Baptists in Europe, the Middle East and Central Asia on the basis of their Christian witness and distinctive convictions. Let me turn to scripture, which encapsulates this concept of unity within the diversity of the one body of Christ, the church. It's no surprise, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse 21 to 26 I've chosen to read. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honourable, we treat with special honour. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that, that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Baptists tend to have a strong theology of the local church to which this passage is rightly applied but struggle to express their theology of the church beyond the local, to which this passage was not written to address, but I believe the principles are applicable. Keith Jones, in his PhD thesis on the European Baptist Federation, demonstrates his belief that there is a theology of interdependency in Europe, and it's demonstrated repeatedly in the first 50 years of EBF. He does not hesitate to describe the EBF structure as an ecclesiology from below, at other times a translocal ecclesiology, but always an ecclesial reality. EBF has stood on this tradition, identifying as an international ecclesial body of Baptist churches, not a Christian organisation, but a federation of conventions and unions the body of Christ international and intercultural, the church beyond the local. Therefore, there is a belief within EBF that God has, as it says in verse 24, put the body together. This strange mix of languages, cultures, customs, beliefs and practices dwell in unity as a witness to the unity of the church and the Godhead. Unions in, in countries divided by war, Israel and Palestine, Azerbaijan and Armenia, Israel and Lebanon, Russia and Ukraine find a place of belonging together in EBF despite the condition of their national relationships. The proclamation of Paul that in Christ there is neither Greek nor Jew is lived out in the fellowship of EBF. We are one body, despite the many differences in theology, ethics, and pastoral practice. For Paul, rejoicing with those who rejoice and mourning with those who mourn is a key demonstration 
of our unity in Christ. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. Therefore I ask, to what extent has the outpouring of prayer, finances, presence, and that communication and storytelling been a suffering with the Baptists of Ukraine? Indeed, can it be illustrated that we have suffered with Ukrainian Baptists and also with Russian Baptists? The Ukrainian Baptist leaders have expressed on many occasions, publicly and in private, that the responses within the EBF community are received as acts of solidarity, encouragement and unity during this painful period. They have expressed that they act as a constant reminder that they are not alone. A regularly expressed fear of the Ukrainian church is that their plight will be forgotten as the war grows ever longer, like the civil war in Syria and the Armenian genocide in Nagorno-Karabakh. These events are underreported and now forgotten as the Israel-Hamas war takes all the headlines. The retelling of stories from Ukraine by EBF assures Ukrainian Baptists of our unity with them and that their suffering is not forgotten. Whilst financial giving to Ukraine has all but stopped, the abundance of initial giving will continue to flow into the country for the next couple of years. And there is the strongly felt and stated belief that when it is time to rebuild the nation, Baptists will once again show their unity in financial giving. Prayer continues in a structured way each month. However, it has inevitably widened to include the other crisis in the region. The Ministry of Presence has changed as Ukrainian church leaders discover a little bit more freedom to move out of the country for temporary events and neighbouring unions continue to develop their ministries crossing the border into Ukraine. Furthermore, visits from further afield now find travel into Ukraine more manageable as demonstrated by the VWA EBF solidarity visit to Kyiv in June 2023. However, what of the weaker bodies and the less honourable bodies to which Paul refers? The Baptist community in Ukraine is one of the stronger member bodies of EBF, possibly the largest body by membership, attendance and infrastructure. What of the parts that feel less honourable at this time? or the parts that are, in Paul's words, unpresentable in the current international context. Today, Russia has been amputated from the rest of the world again, in sport, in the arts, in economics, in politics, in international affairs, and even in the ecumenical movement. If EBF has grown in unity during this war among most members, what of Russia? Russian Baptists feel the pain of isolation. They feel the shame of the actions of Vladimir Putin and express their fear and weakness to confront their governmental powers. How does the EBF treat this socially unpresentable, less honourable part of the body and yet continue to express unity? I shall apply the same four criteria of action, prayer, presence, money, and communication. Each time we gather to pray for peace in Ukraine and for the ministries in Ukraine, EBF voices a gentle request not to forget the ministries that continue in Russia. BWA General Secretary Elijah Brown visited Russia six months into the conflict as a demonstration of solidarity. EBF members in Belarus and Armenia have represented EBF and taken greetings to Russian Baptist events. The Euroasiatic Fellowship has continued to see the active participation of Russian Union, but the Ukrainian Union has functionally withdrawn from this body since the war. EBF Secretary myself has met with the Russian Baptist General Secretary in Turkey and has worked with him on letters of inter uh, to international leaders concerning the conflict. 
But as the war grows on, the opportunities for presence, physical and online, decrease. The opportunities for giving were, for giving were removed almost immediately by global sanctions. And since the attempted arrest of Yuri Sipko, the opportunities of meaningful communication have diminished considerably. Prayer may be the only meaningful expression of unity that remains for that member body at this time. And we pray that they have, may have the security of knowing that we belong together because we belong to Christ. Let me conclude with my response. CBF has a predisposition to unite in times of crisis. It is part of its story of its inception at the end of World War II and has been demonstrated on several occasions since, like the fall of the Berlin Wall, the Balkan crisis, and today in Ukraine. Since the war in Ukraine, EBF has been called to respond to the earthquake in Syria and Turkey, the ethnic cleansing in Nagorno-Karabakh, and the unfolding crisis in the Middle East. In its growing understanding of its missional task for the future, it has recognized the challenge of perma-crisis in the region and is seeking to restructure its limited resources to rebuild a robust core team to support our community of distinctive convictions in their Christian witness. In doing so, EBF recognizes the centrality of unity, a unity that is formed and expressed in belonging to Christ alongside a few core Baptist identity convictions, as well as in actions of presence, prayer, communication and giving, together an act of witness in a fractured world. EBF continues to reflect on our ministry through and between unions and to explore how we can better respond in the future. We recognize in all that we do that only God, who made us different, can hold us together. Thank you.